My brothers and sisters, welcome to Prospect AME Church. We're so glad that you have decided to worship with us. This is a time when we can all engage and look forward to the bright future ahead of us in the Lord. We have a message for you and we know that you have a message for others. Won't you come and engage with us? Let us be joyful together and praise God in the highest. God bless you.
thank you, Lord, for opening doors that some folks thought would be shut for us forever. Thank you. Thank you even for the difficulties of the day. If we had the ability, Lord, we thank you for not allowing us to control our own destiny, but allowing us, Lord, to find a way to follow even deep within our spirit, to be obedient and to be patient and not to be anxious for anything. Show us, God, how to be more faithful to you and at the same time not request to have more faith. Show us, Lord. Show us how to be better leaders. Show us how to be better, better followers, God. Show us how to be greater in our testimony to what you've already done. For Lord, if you had a thousand years in each one of our lifetimes to bless us beyond where you've been, Lord, you will have already blessed us plenty. We say thank you for life just like it is. Help us, Lord. Help us to spread the good news. For indeed, we are not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed of what you've done for us and for what you will do. We claim it even right now. Bless those that are in a difficult place, waiting for their breakthrough moment. Bless those, God, that are trying to dig their way out of the bottom of that barrel. And Lord, help us to rejoice with them when we see them in their victory moment. Show us, God, how to have more compassion, how to love, how to care, how to listen, and how to see. Lord, bless our children, that they will be better than we are, more obedient to you, more dedicated to you. And Father, when we've done all that we can do, we just ask for a place in your kingdom somewhere. It does not matter where. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
It seems like sometimes your problems aren't big, are not big, a big deal to anybody else but you because nobody wants to hear you when you're talking. But once you start talking, they out talk you with what's going on with them. So you get back in that same mode and say, nobody cares. God cares about everything you face and promise to help you through it. When others let you down, God would never let you down. You can trust him to take care of you. And I want to tell you a little story. This mother, father, and his daughter was in their yard cleaning it, and they found a bird's nest. And the girl, young lady, picked it up and said, wow, a bird's nest. And she was looking at it real funny like, and said, oh, this is nice. So she said, Dad, I wonder what kind of bird was in this nest. And he said, well, it look, really looks like a wobbler's nest. And the girl said, well, can I keep it? <clears throat> and he said, sure. So the mother came over and she looked at it. She was looking at it strangely. And she said, you know what? We have a lovely home. That's our nest that God has provided for us. And the girl just looked at her, a nest. She said, our home is like a nest a nest of family and people. Just like the baby Robins, you and your brothers will leave this nest one day. But you know what? When you're growing up and leaving home, that is part of God's plan. Do you ever wonder if you'll be able to get along with your parents, without your parents? A lot of us look forward to getting out of the house I know I was when I got ready to go off to college. I was looking forward to being away from home, away from everything. I was going to do something new and big. And lo and behold, I got there and I started missing my mama, my dad, and everybody else. And I got lonely. But I want to tell you, you don't have to be lonely because God was with you. And you know, sometimes that can be scary when you do leave home. And I want to speak to two group homes that I'm passionate with. I won't call their name, but it's two group homes, a boy's home and a girl's home. You left your nest at home. You left your mom and dad and your sisters and your brothers at home, but you came to another nest. You came to God's nest. You came to a strange city, a strange place where you don't know anybody. But I want to tell you right now, and don't you ever forget, God is with you. God will take care of you. God is your provider, and he's doing things in your life right now. You might be scared, and you don't know what to do. You don't know how to treat your brothers in that house or your sisters in your house. But let me tell you, get along with them. Get along and get to know each other and get to know who God is. I'm quite sure we have delivered Bibles. Bibles are in that house where you are. So I want you to read Psalms 23 and know that God is your shepherd. He is all that you need. And whenever you see you're scared, you got your rod and your staff. It's comforting you right now. God is with you. Don't ever forget that. But I must ask you to trust in God. You'll always be in his nest. He will always watch over you when you leave your families when you leave your family's nest and start a new life, no matter where you are, no matter where you go, God is always with you. So don't be afraid. He says, I'm with you. I'm watching over you. I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to provide for you. I told you that before. He's going to provide for you. Don't you ever forget. And you're going to see me one day in that group home talking to you again. So this is all, it's all, this is all over. We're going to meet again. And you're going to get tired of me looking at you in your face. But God is sending me your way. Young people of Prospect, you're going to see me again when the church doors come open. You're going to get tired of me too. But I'm going to keep letting you know God is with you. Don't be afraid. He's watching over you. I want to tell you this morning, God is caring for you, watching over you. No matter where you go, where you, where, no matter what you do. I must say that we have an amazing God that we serve. He's promised to protect, provide, keep us. God is faithful. Pray, keep God first. He can send somebody your way to help you wherever you need it. God's care for you never ends. And that's God's emptiness. 
Instead of bowing our heads. Lord, we thank you for being on our side. We struggle with issues in our life and worry because no one wants to listen to us. No one cares what we go through, but we know that you do. But you are all that we need. But I am so glad that you are here with me right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. God. 
we all say thanks be unto God. To choose a brief, as a brief topic of reference, my brothers and sisters, this morning, the life we throw away. The life we throw away. It's interesting that we are not truly grateful for the journey that we have until the journey is over. The possessions and the people and the experiences don't really mean anything to us until we have to look back and take an inventory and understand how good things really were. Somebody put it a different way. You don't miss what you have until that thing is gone. We, we, we can speculate and we can look over the fence and we can, we can contemplate in our imaginations how fantastic it is to be somewhere else and to be with somebody else. But my brothers and sisters, it is truly not wise to long for something that we do not have ourselves. Coveting that which other folk may have, looking over into somebody else's backyard and saying, you know what, that's a better place for me to be. The life we throw away, brothers and sisters, oftentimes is a life that was intended to bring us true happiness. A life that would elevate us into a higher place. A life that would, would not be empty at the end of the day, but would fulfill us and give us those resources of the spirit that would carry us into greater expansions of our spirit and our mind. I wonder how many of us can look back and take an inventory and say, once upon a time, the friends that I threw away, I'd love to have right now. Because the one that I already have don't even come close to their character. Brothers and sisters, people are not disposable any more than the life experiences that God gives us. Life experiences from God are intended to make us better people. Don't wish away that which we are in. Why? Because, my brothers and sisters, eventually we'll come to understand that if we did not have the experience that we are in right now, we would not be the great people that God has intended for us to be in the future. It is important to recognize that everything that glitters is not gold. Everything that looks good and that feels good and smells good, you've heard me say this often, it is not always good for us. But my brothers and sisters, it's an amazing thing about the God that we serve. His patience is so long that he'll let us make the same mistake over and over and over again until we finally come to our senses. Come to our senses knowing that what he has given us is what we've been, we're intended to have. What, what he's shown us is what we're intended to see. What he has spoken to us is what is intended for us to hear. And everything else is just background noise. Amen. Sometimes we become so lofty in our achievements, forgetting that it is the benevolence of God that gives us the very life that we have. We forget that it is because of Christ himself that we can even have the hope of entering into the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. Sometimes it is even for those who are chosen as servant leaders to go out among those who are seeking that we indeed also forget that one of those days in our distant past, God saw fit to anoint us with the ability to enlighten the spirit of those who we come in contact with. It's not our good looks or personality. It's not our charisma. It is not that which we put on social media, but it is because of the goodness of the God that has saved us. The life we throw away, brothers and sisters, may be the very thing that we wanted from the very beginning. We just weren't smart enough to understand. Jesus used a parable as he was speaking to those around him. He said to them, once there was this young brother who wanted all that was due to him at one time. It's a funny thing when we feel entitlement, isn't it? It's a funny thing, brothers and sisters, when because of what we see in the mirror, 
we think we ought to just have it because of us. We ought to just get it right now. And nobody can say to us that that is not true, even when we know that it's a lie. This young man, he said to his father, I, I want everything that I was promised. And he took that which his father had set aside for him and for his brother, and he took off and did whatever he wanted to do, the way he wanted to do it, when he wanted to do it. The funny outcome of these types of stories, my brothers and sisters, is that regardless of how much we have, regardless of how much we think we have in the storehouse, if we're crazy with the blessing, it really doesn't last long. And so this young brother found himself hired out because of the great famine that had taken over the land, and he was wishing that somebody would give him that which the hogs that he was taking care of was, were, was eating. When he saw that his belly was empty, his clothes were ragged, and his feet were bare, he began to reminisce about how it used to be. Again, isn't it funny? We don't miss what we have until it's gone. That brother said to himself, I, I, I got to get it together. And when he came to his senses, he decided to go back to his father and say, don't love me as a son. Just take me in as a hired servant. He had been humbled by the experience of loss. Something I want you to remember, brothers and sisters, as we take this journey together on this Sunday morning, is that if we are truly honest with ourselves, we could all look into our crystal ball of yesteryear and say that I've been just like that young brother. Amen. There was a time when I thought I was entitled to everything that I saw. Amen. And when I finally got it, I went crazy with it. But I had to come to my senses because that which I thought was reality was nothing but a fairy tale. First thing, think about this, brothers and sisters. It's funny as we look and examine, always looking for something better does not mean that something better actually exists. Amen. We can put it in our head that the grass is greener on the other side, that the honey is sweeter, that, that the water is colder, that whatever adjective you want to use, we can figure out how to fool our minds to say what we've got is just not enough. I need a, a bigger house. I, I need a better car. I need finer clothes. I need more money. I need more power. I need, I need, I need. But the end of all of those conversations, brothers and sisters, come back to the same place, just like an addict. The more we get, the more we'll want, and enough will never be enough. We end up throwing away that which we should have been holding on to for dear life. When we always want more, brothers and sisters, we forget how it was before the Lord answered our prayer, before we got our breakthrough moment. Can you remember, can you roll back the tape just a little bit, when we were down on our knees and we were saying to God, Lord, if you just bring me out of this thing, if you just let me get above the hurdle that, that I'm in right now, if you just let me eat the food that, I, that I, I so desire, I promise you I won't ask for anything else. And I use that metaphor of food, brothers and sisters, but we're not always asking for food. Some of us are asking for a whole lot more than that and then some. But when we finally get it and we go through it, we've thrown away so much that we don't understand that the life that God had for us at the beginning was the one that we should have had in the first place. But because God is a teaching God, he'll let us go through our foolishness so that we will truly remember what the lesson was all about. Oh, there's no falling asleep in class with God because he'll wait on us. There's no ducking out and coming back at the end of the test. No, he'll wait on us. There's no deceiving God and saying, I'll catch you on the next round. He'll wait on us. And brothers, when the time and, 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 and the place is right, God will show us that what we have is exactly what we need when he gives it to us. It doesn't come out of a bottle. It doesn't come out of a bag. It doesn't come out of a person. But it comes directly from him. The life that we throw away. 
My brothers and sisters can be the light that will turn us into that individual that we are intended to be. Second thing I want you to think about is that the teaching moment of loss is more powerful than anything I can say. The teaching moment of loss is more powerful than anything that anybody can convince us of. Oh, have you ever looked around yourself and said, I, I, I got everything that I can touch, but there's an empty space because I threw away something that God had given me. I threw away my ability to worship him. I threw away the truth that says that once when I was lost, I, I was found by his Holy Ghost presence and I didn't tell anybody. Is there anybody that's listening right now that can say, I have thrown away the essence of life in God? We don't miss it until it's gone, brothers and sisters. When we think about the goodness of God and everything that he's done for us, how many of us have missed the opportunity to say to somebody else, don't, don't make the same mistake that I made. Don't go to the same place that I, I went to. The, let me tell you about my back alley moment and what happened three days later. I, I wonder if there's anybody that is listening right now that said I could have been an asset to the community that I'm in. If I just told the truth about what it feels like to walk with God and not the man like some spoiled child that I get more. My brothers and sisters, the exercise of patience and perseverance is not wasted on those who believe in God because it takes that to stay on the journey. It, we got to go through some things in order to be efficient enough to be of use by God. Let me break it down for you. In order for us to be of use to God, we got to be satisfied with life just like it is and lift our hands to heaven and say, Lord, if you don't give me anything else, you've already taken care of me, and I'm grateful for that. My brothers and my sisters, when we come to the realization that God has already blessed us beyond our, our, our deserving moment. Then we come to a place where we can say to somebody else, don't throw away your life. Don't throw, throw away the love. Don't throw away the compassion simply because you're looking for something new. Finally, my brothers and sisters, I want us to dwell on this idea that it takes time in order to evolve from a place of brokenness to a place of good sense. Yes, Lord. It takes time in order to get out of that bottom of the barrel moment and actually have enough, enough, enough knowledge and teaching behind the moment to not do it again. It takes time to be able to get above the, the praise and the lifting up of folks that just look at what's on the outside. Brothers and sisters, every once in a while, we have to come to our senses just like that brother did as he found himself walling around in a pig pen trying to eat the food that the pigs had thrown to the side. Is there anybody listening that understands that the Lord will teach us what we need to know and keep us from throwing away that which he has given us? Just let us come back into the fold 
Is there anybody right now who's sitting right here listening, saying, I, I, I don't need more. I, I just, I just want to be where I used to be with you, God. I, I just want to be where, where you were when we would sit down and talk with each other and you would give me instruction and I would listen. Oh, is, is there anybody willing to give your life to the Lord right now? This is the invitation to Christian discipleship. Won't you come? Lord, you Won't you come? It doesn't matter where you've been. Lord, you always make a way. Just open up your heart and say, I, I've come to my senses. Thank you.